power. Let's see, you get this stand up there. Y'all don't have enough. We have plenty of copies. If you missed last week's study, please know that the cover sheet and page one and two is on the table outside of the office. Don't worry, you got plenty back there. You need some more. I don't know, bro. I ain't through yet. All right. <laughs> He is beginning to show you his relationship with the Lord and how that has uh, shaped and molded him. Uh, we did talk last week about how he was not always wholly committed to the cause of Christ. If you remember his, uh, his prior record, uh, when he went by the name of Saul of Tarsus, uh, he was uh, anything but a proponent of Christianity and faith in Jesus Christ. So uh, we're looking tonight at chapter 1. He begins this by saying, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom ye are ye also the call of Jesus Christ." To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, call to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what he is discussing here is not just the address or the uh, to whoever's listening, to whom it may concern. He's addressing a relationship that he has with the Lord Jesus and that every other Christians should have with the Lord Jesus. He's, uh, he's talking about being a, uh, a servant. But if you read the original language, then you begin to understand that when he says, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, he's going a little beyond what we would consider. You know, you can hire servants, and, and servants can serve you uh, you go to a restaurant, there are servants, there are servers that, uh, that take your orders and will serve your table. Paul is going beyond that, uh, 
recognizing the fact that uh, he's more than a servant. He's actually a slave. Now, when we consider slavery, uh, of course, uh, north and south, there, there's no difference. There were slaves north and south in this country at one time. Uh, there are slaves yet in other countries, not, uh, not in this one because of uh, uh, actions by our government. Slavery was made illegal. Paul is saying that he is basically a slave to Jesus Christ with all that that entails. Uh, as a slave, consider you are the property of the one who is the owner or the master, if you will. In that regard, Paul considered himself the property of Jesus. If you are a slave, you are be enabled to be called by the master at any moment 24-7. Paul considered himself just that way, that uh, if the Lord wanted him to do it, it didn't matter what day of the week it was. It didn't matter what time of the day it was. It didn't matter where he had to go, what he had to do. He considered himself at the back and call of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the slave's will belongs to the master. Uh, Paul was completely and considered himself completely subservient to, to Jesus Christ. Total obedience. Now, most of us in here uh, would, would say of ourselves that we are obedient to the Lord some of the time. Some might say we're obedient to the Lord most of the time. But it's going a long stretch to say I'm obedient to the Lord all the time. Anybody? That's that's a that's a that's a pretty pretty bold statement. The implication here is that anyone who calls themselves a Christian should be exactly what Paul is describing in this passage of scripture. We recognize who the master is. We recognize that Jesus is God's Son. The, the gospel in miniature is right here in these first seven verses. Uh, it is the gospel of God. And it's all about His Son, Jesus. It came from prophets in the Old Testament. It was fulfilled by those who copied down the words of the New Testament. It, it com concerns God's own Son. He is our Savior. Uh, he was... Uh, fully man, but he was also fully God. Now, is there anybody in here that struggles with that concept? I, I think all of us at some point in time have, have kind of tried to wrap our heads around that. How could he be man and be God? Or how could he be God and be man? Because we recognize in our own selves the... Uh, the propensity of the flesh to do things that are contrary to the will of God. Everybody? Uh, Paul recognized that. But he knew who Jesus was because, again, he, he met the Lord on the Damascus Road in a very powerful way. Uh, I would dare say that Paul, until the day he died, never got over that experience. So we've got the gospel in miniature. We've got Paul who is acknowledging himself as a slave of Jesus Christ. And, and his obedience in that relationship. If you raise children, I know some of them did, uh, or if you had children in your household that uh, raised you, uh, which, whichever way that goes, then, then you understand that sometimes children are not always obedient. Y'all, come on. That's why they invented whippets. 
I mean, that, uh, I mean that's, that's why my mother had that stick that stood by the door. I mean, that, uh, because we don't appreciate that somebody else can call the shots for us. We're born that way. Y'all, you, you, just think a minute. I know they're cute and they're precious and everything else, but there is nothing in this world more selfish than a baby. Because it's all about them. Y'all, somebody tell me, no, Richard, you're wrong. Oh, wait a minute. That thing gets wet. What do they do? They let you know until something's done about it. They get hungry. What do they do? And, and, and again, it's all about that. Well, we grow up and we carry some of that with us. And we still, as adults, we, we tend to think that, you know, it, it, it really is about us. Y'all, it, it's not. It's about Him. It's always been about Him and our relationship with Him. There's another element that Paul addresses. The fifth and most precious thing that Paul meant by being a slave. He meant that he had been called to the highest and most honored profession in all the world. You think about that for a minute. He didn't think that you could rise any higher in this world than to be a pure slave of Jesus Christ. That, that's as good as it got. And that's as good as it's going to get. Uh, it's a position of honor for Him to have the privilege and the responsibilities of serving the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And y'all, for each one of us, if you claim the name Christian, then you have that same responsibility. You have that same privilege that Paul had. I am constantly amazed that God could have called anybody in this world to be His servant. And He called me. He called you. He called every one of us. You remember earlier when I was talking about prayers of thanksgiving and praise? That's one that we need to remember. Please look up the Scripture passages that are given there. Uh, I put those there for each of us to uh, have our own journey through the Word. This is, uh, this is an important study. And if you missed...